Yo, what's up, YouTube? This is Talking Crazy eighty eight back again with another podcast for you. I'm sorry, I was gonna do a, I was gonna do a podcast last week, but I got a copyright strike from YouTube on a video that was like seven years old, and it was removed. So, so since I got the copyright strike, I had to remove some of the videos down that I deem con that may be deemed uh, controversial. So I had to take it down and, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it because I know y'all love the, pot the Talking Crazy 88 podcast. Back then, I can just go off with fire, the fiery podcast that you enjoy so much. But um, I don't know what to do. Maybe I can just set it up as a members only, charging y'all a dollar a month or something like that. 50 cents or a dollar a month. I, because I don't want to... Look, I, I do this as a hobby. I'm not trying to make any money off of it. I'm not trying to get any fame or anything like that. Man. I'm just... I, I, like I said, I'm just a middle-aged man just running my goddamn mouth. You know? That's what I'm doing. That's what I enjoy doing. I enjoy talking to you brothers about the issues that's going on between black folks, right? Now, the last live stream I did regarding I'm being a passport bro, and I'm still stuck with that. I think a lot of the, a lot of you brothers out there should go ahead, get your passport, and get the fuck up out of here, all right? But do it for the right reason. Don't do it for no bitch now. All right. Now, let me just say this, because I've been listening to video, uh, videos and podcasts for the past couple, past month re regarding this issue. And I heard all sides from the brothers that travel, the expats, the females, the males, as well as the dating coaches, who, you know, who has something slick to say about the passport movement. Um, especially some punk ass, bitch ass nigga. We're gonna call him the P man because he's a pussy. Uh, he, he will be, I, I won't name him by name. But y'all know, um, those of y'all who's in the past four bro community, the past four bros community, y'all know who I'm talking about, that bitch ass nigga out in Uganda. And I'm not talking about O'Shea Duke Jackson. I'm talking about this bojangling looking nigga that's on the internet who has something slick to say. And, and this bitch ass tried to challenge me to go pull up on his punk ass struggle stream i'm not going on that struggle stream to talk to to bitches all day argue with bitches all day what, what kind of what kind of a man would do some some bullshit like that just sit on a panel all day or spend my valuable time arguing with another man about what another man what a man is what a man is doing you have to be some sort of a bitch to do something. To spend, to waste your time. Look, these brothers out here, whether you agree with it or not, about their motives of travel. Personally, I don't give a fuck why you travel because not because whether you get out of this country for a little bit, little bit, or become an expat, or do the smart thing. Let, let me just talk to you from an economics point of view. Because I saw the, the interview with Jason Black. Now, not for nothing, like I said, I don't take a lot of things what the, what this guy, what this character says seriously. First of all, he never shows his face. Now, you may say, talking crazy 88, uh, you never show your face. Well, first of all, I, the difference between that is because I'm just running my mouth. I'm not looking for any fame. I'm not looking to get recognized. I'm not looking to get doxxed. Or I'm not looking to, to go through all the bullshit that you put Tommy Sotomayor through. 
because of my controversial opinions or my unpopular opinions. And it's not because of my career. Well, 10 years ago, it was because of my career, but now with the job situation, and I'm going to do another podcast. I'm going to do a podcast on the job situation because an OG broke it down to me why those college degrees are worthless. Worthless. You're paying hundreds of thousands of thousands thousands of dollars in student loans as well on top of the interest on the student loans to get a fifty thousand dollar a year job to get a job. Okay? That's what you're doing. You're, you're paying all this money to get a bullshit ass job. All these jobs are bullshit unless you're an elite white person who comes from an elite family. They can get those, they can go to Harvard, okay? Get that Harvard degree. You can need, you can need, write your own ticket. That's what it is. You're not going to write your own ticket with a SUNY Plattsburgh degree, all right? So let's stop. Cal State Fullerton degree. Yeah, no, 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 no. The areas that you're going to be able, want to go into as an executive level, uh, with a Cal State Fulton degree or a Long Island University Brooklyn degree, uh, rest assured you're going to get the same job that you would have gotten if you had been a high school degree, graduate or a GED graduate because that's what you're competing for. Okay? That's what you were competing for. All right? That's what I was competing for 10 years ago before, before I wised up and said, why the fuck am I complaining about my college degree? I can do so much more running my own consulting firm. You know, look, fellas, you go to you go to a job to learn whatever it is that you need to learn until you start your own and you should start your own shit. Like I said, this is the perfect time to do so. Because we're impending a depression, not a recession, people. A depression. Now, I can economists say have predicted this for a while that yeah, it's gonna get bad. Every year, every ten years, shit always hit the fan. It is gonna get worse. It is never gonna get better. The only time it's gonna get better is when World War Three is coming. And oh yeah, it's coming. Oh yeah. It's coming. All right? It's a coming. All right? <laughs> All right? And when, and when, and when, these, and when there's a reset after World War III, you know what War, World War IV is going to be? It's going to be sticks and stones. That's what other countries are going to be fighting with, sticks and stones. All right? It's going to be a reset. All right? From the way we know the world. All right, the way we grew up, but we'll we'll get on that on another on another video. On that. I, I'm I, I would be delighted to talk to you about my political uh, my political theories of what's going to happen in the near future. All right, but getting back to this passport situation now, there's a brother named Austin Holloman who just can, rose above the sea, and he's got a lot of. He's got a lot of support from not only black, the passport brothers, but from white guys <laughs> who travel overseas. See, they don't, they don't really like to talk about it. these white guys that go over to Asia and go over to South Pacific and Asia, you know, the fuck them women over there, all right? Now, there was an owner who owned a delivery company called DHL. I saw his documentary a few years ago, all right? And, um, he made his money and sold off his company and he went, he retired all the way out to an island side of the South Pacific where he was just fucking young girls all day long. That's all he was doing. Eat, sleep, shit, and fucking young girls. That's what he was doing. <laughs> That's how he spent his time. That's how he spent his life. All right. So, so uh, you miss me with that 
but the thing about it is, is that the only difference is, is that now, now niggers are saying that brothers are going down there to get with prostitutes and everything. Look, you're going to get set up and robbed and blah, blah, blah. Let me just tell you something, man. About a month ago, in the Bronx, there was a brother that met a woman on a dating app. And they set up a date in one of these Bronx hotels here in the Bronx, right? So when he got there, the bitch showed up with three other with three other people and a nigga with a gun. All guns, point, yeah, had a gun on him. Pointed a gun at him, robbed him, stripped him all of his clothes, and left him naked, but football naked in the hotel room, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And apparently, these band of merry idiots did this to a couple of other suckers in the Bronx area, right? They tell you, be careful with these hoes on the internet, on the dating app. And they happen to be American women, okay? You can get robbed, you can get set up, you can get drugged out here in these streets. But the only difference is the brothers that men don't really talk about, it, all right? Because they got families. It, it's an embarrassment. It's it's embarrassing to get robbed by a bitch trying to get some pussy. It is. All right? It's it's very embarrassing. Nobody likes to talk about that shit. Who likes to talk about being held up by a bitch because I was trying to get some pussy? I was trying to buy some pussy. Get robbed, man. You can get robbed here. That's why I tell these brothers, man, just be careful when you're doing those pay for play out there. All right? Keep that shit to yourself, man. If you're paying for pussy out there, keep that shit to yourself, man. But have a good time. But keep that shit to yourself, man. But, you know, I, I, but I just wanted to let the brothers know, hey, look, man, there's more to just getting pussy, more than traveling, than just get, going out there to get some pussy, all right? All right? Because, you know, that should be the afterthought. Going out there, you should really enjoy the lifestyle, the culture, the food, uh, the different ways of life. You should be uh, just, you should be decompressing from a or detoxing from the American way of life, where you can just come back to the States with a different perspective, man, on life, on relationships. Because let me tell you something, the relationships here in the States, it sucks. I hate to say it. I hate to tell you. And these a lot, and a lot of these dating coaches, like, uh, you know, I, I hate the name drop, but I've been listening to Mr. Locario and his very, uh, and his, merry band of dating coaches who I don't really take them seriously as well. I look at them as a form of entertainment. They're entertaining to me, but they do. I'm going to be, I'm going to have to be very honest with you to, especially to the passport brothers, man. Um, they're not wrong in what they're saying that when you leave America, when you leave the United States, man, when you go on to another country and you try to date one of these women, you may think it's a lot easier and the women there are a little bit more cooperative, a lot more cooperative than the women here in the States. But that's only because culturally, it depends on the culture that, it depends on the country that you go to, is in their culture that the women there um, have to cater to their men. They have to have a respect for their men. See, they don't do all that bullshit over here. The bullshit that they do here, they don't do over there. Let me tell you something. If they like you, like in some cult, in some countries, man, you go on a date with a woman for three, three dates with a woman, that's a relationship, man. That bitch think you're in a relationship with you're dating, you're moving towards marriage. All right? A lot of these countries, a lot of these countries, man, a lot of the women out in these countries, man, they're not in the streets like that, like the women here. 
who like to be in the streets at 40, 50, man, damn near 60 years old, man, want to still be in the streets. All right. See, see they, they, they don't, they don't, they, they kind of, because of culturally and religious reasons, they do not like their women, the men do not like their women being in the streets. Okay. They don't. They don't. You know, they're not, they're not, you know, look, man, look, and, and I tell you, the reason why it's in place because it's been like almost centuries that a, a lot of these countries have been around longer than the United States. It's been around for centuries. All right. Here in the United States, it's been established for almost really established for almost damn near 300 years but prior to that i would say about a good four or five hundred years since the white man been on this country all right and the problem with the united states is that yeah you got you got a, a limited freedoms that you wouldn't have anywhere else but to see that's the problem because there is no order there is no structure. There is no order. All right. Socially, I'm not talking about economically and politically. I'm talking about socially. There is no order. And we see that in the last 40 years, the last 40, make, damn near, well, check that, the last 60 years, in the last 60, 70 years, um, we have allowed the women and I'm talking about all women of all races here in this country, particularly the white women, we allow them to bastardize the men in this country. They don't, they don't like the, they don't like male leadership here in this country. See, see, the, 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 the the reason there's a reason why in the black community, right, the black folks are there's about they say that the percentage is it's like seventy percent of single 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 mother households that are raising children, particularly black boys, all right, without a father influence. Well, whatever the reason is, there there is no there is no father in the house. And if there is a father in the house, it's, it's kind of weak. It is weak. All right. It's weak leadership. Okay. Okay. It's weak. So now all of a sudden after the pandemic where these bitches went online, went on YouTube, TikTok, telling on themselves, saying that they want to be in the streets. And they said, and the guys during the pandemic realized that, hey man, we can go, over, we can go overseas. That's where a lot of this boom came from. But I, I hey, listen, I've been watching these travel, these travel brothers go overseas, especially Charles Tyler. God rest his soul, man. I I always wanted to go down to Brazil and meet the brother, man. Just hang out with him, and on his beach, uh, on his uh, on his on his on his parties that he always have every November down in Brazil, right? I just never got a chance because, like I said, I was working a job. Okay, I was trying to get a job. Okay instead of developing my connections and developing my connections, knowing the right people so I can start my own yard and I can go ahead and do whatever the fuck I want to do. Okay. Because I'm kind of liking this consulting business, man. I like it. I love it. Love being an expert. Love solving problems. Tell you, it's 
that's it feels good to make your own money man it feels good not having to go into a meeting to explain to some idiot about you taking a five you know coming back from lunch five minutes late okay <laughs> getting written up from coming back from lunch one two maybe three minutes late you gotta explain that shit. Ah man, fuck all that. Man. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. Make your own money, man. Learn how to make your own money. Learn how to survive. Don't be dependent on anybody. Not even a yob. Full disclosure, I saw what it did to my father, man. Depending on a yob for 30 years. Yeah, when that yacht, when that business folded, so did his job. Okay, happened to me a couple of times, man. Layoffs came about. I was the first one on the list because I didn't give a fuck about that job. Knew it in my soul, but you know there was a lot of things I should have did twenty years ago. But you know I didn't. I'm still alive. I'm still healthy. I still have both my legs, my my feet, my arms, my faculties, my ability to make money. I can still do it. I can still do it. Anybody can still do it. Whether you're middle aged, old geezer, or young, and that's why I'm that's why I'm so glad that Austin Howard, he's out there doing his doing his thing, man. He figured it out. He figured out that the bitches ain't shit in this country. But I will have to press back on it. And, and I'm kind of on the dating coach's side on this on this one. Because I see, and I would have pulled him aside and said, look, man, you know, I know you're frustrated and you're angry at these women. And believe me, I, I'm angry. I, I am angry at these women too. I need to. I'm angry. But somebody put it to me. You know, one of his, Mr. Locario's callers, he stated that, you know, you know, this, this is the reason you're angry because you got rejected. You're angry. And the, the women, and it doesn't matter what race of women, it doesn't matter what country, culture of the women, you go to any other country, they'll, they'll smell the anger on it. They'll be nice to you. They'll be cordial to you. They'll even date you, but they, they, they can tell the anger that's inside of you. And, and when you're dealing with a woman, you don't want to be angry, whether she reject you harshly or reject you softly. You, you don't want to be angry at them. And that's what, and that's why I took that podcast, that live stream down that I did during New Year's Day. Well, a couple of days after New Year's, after I got dumped by this bitch. And I have to look within myself. You know, what was it? Because I, I what was it about me? You know, instead of saying, what was it about me she didn't like? I should have been in tune and said and looked at her and observed the situation. Hey, maybe this bitch don't like me. Maybe I have the signals that yeah, this I don't make her pussy team. She don't see me as a, a sexually attracted to. For whatever reason. It could be mental, it could be physical, it could be anything. See you know, we 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 miss the point that women, whether you're here in the United States or overseas, a woman has to be sexually attracted to. You, right? Culturally, she'll do everything she can. She'll do anything she want. You want, but she has to be sexually attracted. To you. And there's nothing like a woman that's sexually attracted to you, right? That's what. Mr. Lucario said, that's what Coach EO Everett Overton said. The half breed brother. I think he's a brother. I know my people. But but I think he's also a gigolo too. 
All right, low key. He's a coach. He, he's he's one of those coaches I can identify with, a dating coach. But I think you can learn a lot from him. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would say, look, I wouldn't pay thousands and thousands of dollars for no damn dating coach for something that should be established here in the United States, where men and women should be able to get together. It's a shame that. It's a shame, but it's a necessary shame that brothers have to go overseas to go to get the woman that they desire, the, the woman that they desire over there, rather than opposed to getting the woman that they desire over here. See, you can get a black woman overseas. You can go to Latin America to get a black woman. You can go to Africa to get a black woman. All right? Hell, you can even go over to Europe and get a black woman. There's black women over there. There's black women in Canada. Take your ass up, well, take your ass up to Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. And you'll find a whole mess of black women up there, man. Single. You know how I know? I, I've been up there. Shit. But like I said, I would, I would pull him to the side, man, and say, look, man, you, you should... Yeah, you, you going out there saying fuck American women, but you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. You you do have to have some sort of game, and that's something you can't teach. All right, it it, it is within, and it, it it is within because we have forty years of programming to be a pussies men need to be a pussies towards women all right okay 40 years 40 years man so let me tell you something when you go over to these countries man i, I would strongly get some intel and learn the culture learn learn the way learn how things operate instead of just looking at titties and ads and a cooperative young lady that likes you and your skin. All right. Okay. Yeah, there's going to be feminism. And like I said, there was a white woman. There was a white woman. Hold on. Let me pause this for a second. I'm going to find that clip and I'm going to play it here. Hold on. Okay, here we go. I found the clip. Hold on for a second. Uh, did you hear that, people? 
Did he hear that bullshit? I, I, I just gotta say this, man. It, it, this is a white woman talking crazy about white men going over to Asia to find a woman that's not in the streets like these American ass women, white women are. They're in, who who hop around from dick to dick, you know, and want to just take that high, want to work 70, 80 hours a week, neglect their families, neglect their children, neglect their men. This is white men going overseas to Asia to get what they can't get in America. See, even the white men are tired of the of this feminist bullshit and that these women are running around, you know, hopping on dick to dick. Okay? And not doing what they're supposed to be doing as a woman in biblical or naturally. A woman is supposed to be a man's help me. A woman is supposed to follow a man, not the other way around. So I get what Austin Holloman is saying. I get what that young brother is saying. He's saying the same shit that I was saying 10 years ago when I was telling brothers, go get your passport. Fuck these American women. And I'm, well, initially I said, fuck these black American women. But when you get outside of the black American, when you get outside of the community, you're going to realize, hey, man, it's all these bitches are crazy. All these bitches are off their rocket. All these bitches, you just got to get, you got to have some sort of game to get with them. Now, if you're leading with money, that's even worse because these bitches will get you. Trust me. A bitch is not going to like. The bitch will hang out, will date you. In America, the bitch will hang out with you if she don't like you. The bitch will gain you if she don't like you. Okay? The bitch will get whatever she wants to get out of you if she don't like you. I have to come to the conclusion that a lot of these American women that you're going to encounter, that you're going to approach, that you're going to... And that's another thing, guys. You got to stop being so... You got to stop being so sensitive, including myself, when a woman appro when you're approaching a woman. Now, I don't mean approach a woman randomly off the street, right? Okay? It has to be the right time, the right environment. I mean, if you want to do that, if you want to approach a woman, random women off the street, who ain't even thinking about you, who ain't thinking about, you know, fucking with you like that. She just wanted to go to point A to point B. If you want to do that shit, go right ahead. Knock yourself out. It may even build your self-esteem and courage. I don't do that shit. But if you want to do that, cool. But you got to start. Look, fellas, you got to get off these dating apps. You got to go ahead. You got to go out in the real world and start approaching these women. Okay? 